I'm a researcher and artist. I'm uh, from the Netherlands and I work mostly with visuals, so I'm happy to work with Boca. I do music, I do computer music, and I'm also happy to work with Rosa because I never, I never really work with the visual artist. something like that. So that means that uh, it won't be only about uh, music and, uh, and the visuals. Or well, like uh, there is some narrative behind it and some conceptual kind of... Yeah, it's like a translation of uh, a research also. So not just about the, the aesthetics, but also to kind of give a message to the audience. Yeah, to give people an overview of how image processing technologies and also sound technologies um, have developed following certain biases. And so we're um, trying to um, turn around those biases or like, put a kind of an attention to them. So what I'm doing is a lot of the research I've done in color test cards. They've always been white naked ladies. I will show a lot of white naked ladies, but I'm also kind of like move away from that and try to show other ways of testing your technologies. And Boca will be um, using the sounds of uh, tutorials, prep tutorials. Not, not, not only, but not uh, only. the point is that like, uh, like since we are uh, working on this together, uh, I also I'm, I'm also trying kind of I'm trying to abuse uh, like the common technologies or uh, tactics of working, working with sound and I'm trying to kind of uh, yeah, exploit it. Like be it, be it altitude, be it like uh, noise cancellation, be it uh, vocal, vocal extraction from a song, you know, or whatever. It's like we'll, we will break this kind of uh, expectation, what people expect from audio-visual performance, basically. No, so I mean, I'm, for instance, not really uh, a performing artist so much. So it's uh, a challenge, in a way, to work with somebody that is more a performing artist. Then um, maybe I'm doing more of the research and the writing and <coughs> some static images. and then. Here we have like a real um, conversation about how can we bring this in a more performative way to the audience, which is a, it's a challenge, but it's interesting. Um, I think VR is a really interesting technology that is really terrible to use for a piece of art because VR, if you're watching it, you're kind of cutting yourself away from the outside world. So if you're in a gallery or whatever, you know people are watching you, you feel the pressure of the outside. So the question how do you make work for VR is a really problematic question in my mind. I've been wishing to do a VR performance on a stage, wearing the goggles myself and like, or even maybe putting my mother on the stage and making her experience my VR. So it's like an older lady, she's like 78 now, 
putting these goggles on and she's not trained to wear goggles ever in her life but just reading glasses and then that she has to learn how to wor work in VR that would be like really interesting to me but then it's a performance of what VR is and how confusing it is for the first time so that's like it's something completely different now we were asked to work with uh, VR technologies but I didn't think it was like the right moment to do this kind of experiment because it's not about that what we are trying to uh, do in this performance. So I will make some stuff uh, and project it in 3D world as textures. So I made an environment in which I can put different kind of textures that kind of reflect on the main issue that we have now, which is uh, dealing with decalibration. Yeah. Sometimes art suffers when it is too much exposed to technology, a new technology, like Kinect, imagine that, you know. You remember like uh, how people were using it and it's, it's not that interesting, basically, I think. I learned a lot from working with musicians because they work very different, so the flow is something I always have to get used to. Um, I learn also a lot about myself because I have like a lot of things that I cannot do, like work fast or uh, make new footage really fast is really a problem. Uh, if I work with a musician, I like to get the sound ahead, but that in a collaboration is not always the easiest. So. Yeah, I, I learned about my own limitations, let's say. It's completely different to like commercial music tools, which are kind of, uh, how to say, the, the, the makers of the software made it in a way like uh, you have to use it some way. The, the, the people behind the software are telling you, you know, and uh, Super Collider is kind of different because you've got a complete freedom there. <laughs> And what you want to achieve, you can, you can, you can do that. It's FL Studio Week, Fleek FL Week, and in this video, we're going to show you how to complete a whole trap beat inside of FL Studio 12. So we're going to start from scratch and show you every step it takes to con complete a trap beat. So the steps we're going to go over today are picking the right drum. I think the biggest problem is to ask what is the next best thing. I think in a way that is also what our performance is about, that's not the point. Every time you're trying to update, to make it better, make it more extreme, you also lose a lot of like understanding of what is really going on. You're just trying to be newer, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think what we're doing is actually take stuff apart into seeing what, how these technologies have been built in this kind of way and give a bit of a better understanding of more archaic ways on which we're still building so we're not looking to the future we're actually more looking at the past to understand where we are now and i think that is way more interesting and important than to understand what is the next best thing because i mean come on nothing is i mean even futurist writers they're not really writing about the future they're just writing about the now and they use futuristic language so i think that's what we're trying to do with a plus sign 808 science drums and then we're also going to add uh the x kit for busyworksbeats.com so let's go back let's go to x drums so now we see uh x drums at the bottom here has been added so now we can access those drum samples from those folders inside of our browser okay so let's click out of the file settings and let's go to the bottom left and here's where we're going to start picking our kick drum our snare our hi-hats and then we're going to pick our 808s from the 808 science drum so i have my subs on so we can hear the 808 tones a little bit better so first let's go to kicks first sounds you want to pick for your drums are the kicks and snares and we're going to give you the file download for this project so you don't have to worry about trying to find these sounds okay so we have kicks we're just going to run through the kicks and it takes this little clock shows you that it takes